All right, uh, we are so excited about our first guest. Chosen by the New York Times as one of the best shows of 2017, Israel's hit Fauda is proving that this small country can produce high quality content that revolutionizes Hollywood. And we are so pleased to have the uh, creator and writer of Fauda, Avi, I'm gonna say Izakharov, because that's how we say in a, in, a, in the States, but it's Izakharov. How do you say it? Almost, almost. Well, how do we say it in Hebrew? Izakharov. Izakharov. Yeah, it's not that that's complicated, Why not just am I? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Really, Thank it's you. such a pleasure to meet you. And I, you know, I love that I, I recently started Safada, so it's very fresh in my mind. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting how you were able to put together like a concept based on your experience as a journalist. Like, tell me about your background and how it, you know, it transferred over to, you know, scripted television. Uh, so, both uh, Leo Raz, my co creator, my friend, uh, and I grew up in Jerusalem. And after the army, Leo became an actor and I became a journalist. Well, a few hours after that, but uh, I became a Middle East uh, reporter, then a Middle East analyst. I've been working here for I 24 for a year and a half or two years. And then, uh, you know, covering the Middle East for 16, 15, 14 years, it was back, back at that time, it was 14 years, you get all kinds of ideas um, that right. gives you the inspiration to go and write something much deeper than just covering the news exactly. for daily basis. Right. And I think that that's what led us, I mean, together, Leo, uh, the undercover units, uh, the Middle East, Hamas, the PA, everything all together we brought into this uh, huge pot. And we try to make out of it something uh, that smells good and tastes good, and I think that with a, you know with a little bit of with a little bit of drama. Now you you and Lior go back really really far. I didn't know how you knew each other until just now. How old were you when you guys met? I think I was 16. Wow. Um, maybe even 15. So you came of age together. Yeah. You yeah, drank yeah. together for the first time. <laughs> totally, totally. But I, the, the whole thing started some like uh, 10 years ago. No, less. Sorry. Six years ago, seven years ago, we've met uh, not far from Baumala by accident. We started to talk, we started to discuss, do you have a dream? I have a dream, no, I have a dream. And we decided to meet in Tel Aviv again and to discuss the option of writing a show that describes the, the undercover units in Israel, their operations, and of course the other side, the Palestinian side, and what do they do in order to overcome the other right. side. Right. I mean, what's so interesting, I mean, it's true, because as a journalist, I'm also, you know, a long-time journalist as well. I mean, you can only tell the story kind of from an objective point of view. You can't give your opinion. You know, why is this such a great creative outlet to be able to kind of instill the drama in your own creative license, you know, in a way that, you know, you can't talk about secret missions in Israel or, you know, heads are going to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that we try to do... We, we, we couldn't tell everything, of course. We tried to give the audience, the viewers, a kind of a glance, a look into the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Even the Israelis, you know, the Israelis, we live here, we suffer so-called from the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, but it's not that too many Israelis really understand what's going on on the other side of the fence or the right. wall. Right. And I think that what we try to do is to give the Israelis a sense about what's going on over there, behind this wall, behind this curtain, and most of the Israelis, the majority, is not aware of uh, the undercover unit's operations, right. the, the price that these people are paying, the daily life. I mean, on their personal lives, on I mean, the, the toll on their personal life to be gone, for, you know, and not knowing, you know, if your spouse is going to, you know, yeah, make it yeah. home. Well, what, what, how does it affect upon your family, upon your wife, upon right. your kids? And it has, it has a very, a very strong effect. Do you feel like in any way by telling it from this perspective, because, you know, you do see the human side of the other side. I mean, as awful as these people are, I mean, even the main character, you know, the boy that was, uh, boy, the young man that was protecting the terrorists. I mean, you see the, the human side of them. I mean, do you feel like, you know, through storytelling in this way, I mean, there is a way to kind of crack this, you know, Cold War? I mean, is, is, from doing this, is there a solution? I'm not that naive. I'm not <laughs> that... You're no. Israeli. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm naive. I'm the friar. <laughs> no, it's not, <laughs> it's not that we think, it's not that we thought, it's not that we have any kind of uh, inspiration that we will make a change in the region and we will change people's point of view. It's not that. But the purpose was much more limited, meaning giving a glance, giving a look, having 
a kind of an ability to listen to the other side and understand a bit more about the other side. And that also goes for the Palestinian side. Meaning right. when Palestinians watch the show, they could found, find themselves, um, uh, well, I would say being sympathetic with right. the Israeli side. You know, right. it happened to me during the, the shooting of the second season. We were in Kfar Qasem, which is an Israeli-Palestinian Arab City. village. Mm -hmm. And one of the people over there, one of the neighbors of one of the houses that we were shooting in, approached me and said, are you the creator of the show? I said, yes. He said, I want to play in Fauda third season. I said, okay, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to do a Hamas guy, a Palestinian Authority guy? He said, no, 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 I want to become an undercover agent. Wow. And this is what he said, you know, this is a Palestinian Israeli Arab guy, but he has in his fantasy to act as if he were one of the undercover agents. Wow, that's really amazing. So now what can we expect? I mean, listen, New York Times, you know, so many accolades. I mean, to be, you know, to be in this company where there's millions and millions of dollars versus here in Israel, you know, what now is the kind of the continuation? I imagine you have a bigger budget for season two. So, are we, no? Not really? No. This is still Israel. No, this is still Israel. This is the same budget. <laughs> and, you know, just in order to, to let your audience to compare, the whole season of second season, is not even close to one episode of an average drama on American TV. Wow. One episode, much more budget than the whole season that's, uh, of wow, that's second That's unbelievable. Season. So tell us what you can. I mean, obviously, the first episode aired, aired here in Israel. You know, Americans are the ones seeing this. We have to wait until spring to see it on Netflix. Yeah. So does it really continue, you know, where the last season ended? Because it ended with a bang. Yeah. And more or less, it's going to start with a bang on the second season. It's going to end with the first episode on the, with a big bang. So it's hectic. It's, uh, it's very fast. It's cruel, just like the first season. But... A bit more. You know, everything that you expect from the second season is where we took it. Then again, uh, we meet another bad guy uh, that is even worse than the first one that we had on the first season. It's I found the first guy somewhat sympathetic. Yeah, yeah. The other because he loved guy, his wife. I was like, why am I sympathetic to this guy? The new guy is less sympathetic, but you love him. He's so charismatic. You know, women that watch the show just love him. I, I heard so many Israeli women that asking about him. who is this sexy guy. <laughs> is he single? Uh, he's single, <laughs> yes. Now, let's talk about also, you know, the, the whole, you know, the change of, uh, you know, Israeli content really catching the eye of Hollywood. We were together. I didn't get a chance to meet you, but I was at the TV uh, conference, the second annual conference, where they had all kinds of Hollywood agents, Ben Silverman, you know, the head of Netflix and FX. I want to show a clip first from uh, the CEO of FX, John Landgraf, who really talked about, you know, how exciting, you know, Israeli content is. So take a look. Very interesting being here in Israel because there's a limited number of channels here and those channels still have a kind of power and a kind of centrality, an ability to galvanize people's attention that's been lost in, in, in America. So a great amount of uh, admiration and heart for this uh, small country that punches way, way, way above its weight. That's a big compliment. It is. It is. And then again, I think that, you know, it was kind of surprising for us that the Israeli audience liked it. Really, I, I'm not... The jaded Israelis. <laughs> no, really. I mean, we were shocked that Israelis liked the show. What we had in mind is that very few people would watch it because it's about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because half of no it is in No one wants to hear about no it anymore. No one wants to hear right? about it. Yeah. Come on. But then, you know, after the big surprise in Israel, then we were shocked by the responses all over the world. It's not only about the US, forget about it. It's in South it's America, global, Central America, it's a global... Africa, Middle East, Arab countries. This show became very popular among Arabs. And then again, the Far East, everywhere that we go, I, I was a few months ago in Australia talking about Fauda. So you understand that this is something much, much bigger from Israel boundaries and what can I say? Basalto. Yes. That's what we can say. Mabruk I love Arabic. it. Baruch, baruch, hamsa, hamsa, hamsa. Hamsa, hamsa. That's my favorite thing to say. <laughs> anyway, Avi, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you very much. And 